Hello and welcome back to Together We Can. I'm your host, Kevin Bargander, and today with me I have Becky Kamarowski, a dementia care, dementia care specialist with Trempolo County. Welcome, Becky. Hello. So what is your role uh, in dementia, as a dementia care specialist? Yeah, so the dementia care specialist, um, I'm within the Aging and Disability Resource Center here at the county. Um, so the dementia care specialist role started on a grant and then it progressed on since it had such um, great effects on the counties that it piloted in. So now every county in the state um, now has a dementia care specialist. So depending on the size of the county, kind of depends on funding. So if they have one or two um, dementia care specialists for Tremplow County, we just have one. So just myself. Awesome. And how long have you been in your role? Yeah, I've been in my role um, just coming up on two years. Um, so it's been um, gone by pretty fast. Um, surprising that it's already almost two years and it's a unique position because there's only one in every county so I heavy rely heavily on working with other dementia care specialists in the state. Awesome what what's your favorite part about being a dementia care specialist? I would say my favorite part is being able to go out and do the home visits and now that I've been in the role a little bit having some small success stories and being able to make the connections and see um, once we put those supports and things into place that um, the person is able to age in home as long as they safely can. Awesome. And tell me more about kind of how the program, like the pillars of the DCS program. Yeah. So the DCS program runs, um, relies mainly on three different pillars. Um, so the first pillar is really primarily working with the person with dementia, um, diagnosis or not. Um, and then the second one is really working on that caregiver. Um, so partnering with them, helping them find supports in the community, um, supports within the DCS program, and just really connecting them to all things to help them be successful because you know, if they're the primary caregiver and they burn out or something happens to them, then what happens to, you know, their care partner, the person living with dementia. And then the third main pillar is really working with the community. So partnering with any businesses and looking at, you know, them being become dementia friendly, doing some trainings. Um, what does it look like if someone has dementia? What are maybe some key um, symptoms that people could be picking up in the community and how to best work with them? Um, and another big thing is just really talking more about brain health and what can we do um, to help our brains age um, in a positive way and not negative ways. You know, what environmental factors play into effect for that and what ways we can just really focus on our brains and there's always time to make new neurons and continue to keep learning and strengthen that brain. Yeah, I was actually just watching something about uh, different brain games you can play. Is that something that you would also do? Yeah, um, there's quite a few different areas that, you know, it's really good to keep your brain moving in all different ways, learning new things. Um, so that's something, always learning something new, um, doing things differently. If you've always done the crossword every morning, um, that's not really a brain game anymore. That's something that's part of your routine. Um, so really focusing on that brain health. Awesome. And then who do you primarily serve? What was kind of your audience? Yeah, so our audience at the Aging and Disability Resource Center is generally, um, you know, when thinking about the elderly, 60 and over, but really with this position, it doesn't matter because um, you're seeing that someone who has dementia, those symptoms could be starting um, anywhere, you know, really early, early onset, could be in your 30s, um, something unique. So just looking at, you know, um, working with those consumers and you know assisting them in the best way possible so the caregiver the care partner um, the person with dementia and just the community in general and, and how big of a role does the caregiver really you know how big of a role do they uh, i would say provide for the person that's uh, being cared for well if the person is living at home i mean that's their primary person. Um, so if something happened to that caregiver, um, what would that crisis situation look like? If law enforcement or EMS came in, fire came in, um, you know, could that person stay at home by themselves or not, you know, if something happens. So um, caregivers are the main ones keeping the person at home um, as long as they can. So helping add in any of those support systems. So, you know, looking at possibly is a long-term care program, um, you know, 
Does the person qualify for that? What supports? Um, we have two programs in the state of Wisconsin, um, National Family Caregiver Programs. Um, so that is providing supports. So we have the National Family Caregiver Program and then we have the Alzheimer's based one. Um, so they're funding that we get from the state of Wisconsin. So helping um, more people in the county know about that, um, that it's funding to help that person age in home as long as possible. What are those supports? Is it providing some day respite? Is it providing some hands-on care? Um, just different items and products to help them stay in home, um, connecting them to different technology. And, and when you meet with uh, one of your clients, what does a meeting like that consist of? Yeah, so kind of each one is a little bit different. It's really working with that family and um, seeing what is what is the main concern right now. Um, is it possibly a crisis situation? Is it just looking preventative ways to keep mom or dad um, at home safe, not wandering off um, from the house? Um, so we kind of have a general meeting and then we kind of dive in deeper after that once we can kind of pinpoint and figure out what we really need to hone in on. Um, and then it goes from there. And then uh, how long can a person or a family work with the DCS worker yeah, like so, you? Yeah, so that's unique because um, my position, we don't have any you know, boxes that we have to check off and then I am done. We're not communicating with the family anymore. Uh, dementia is a long process. Um, so it's an ongoing position. Um, it's ongoing relationship that we continue to keep working with each other. Having that rapport, obviously, as long as the family and the person living with dementia wants to keep having those connections, so. What's the longest you've worked with somebody? Um, I would say since I've only been in the position two years, I mean, there are some people when I first started in the position that I still have contact with. Their loved one is still living at home with them um, and maybe just has progressed a little bit where now we're looking at maybe finding some day respite for the caregivers so they can go and enjoy activities and just have time for themselves. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience today? Um, one thing I would like to just share is a memory screen. Um, so what is a memory screen? Anyone can have a memory screen done. Um, I would conduct it. It is not to diagnose you. It is simply just to have a conversation more about um, brain health and what does that look like? What is healthy aging? What is not healthy aging? Um, it's a simple tool that then you can take to your primary care physician um, and show them that you had this memory screen done and if you are having concerns, what might those be? Um, and ways to help better facilitate that conversation with your um, primary caregiver. And what are some ways that people can reach out to you and ask for support? Yeah, um, so you can always contact the ADRC by calling 715-538-2001. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank Becky Kamrowski today for joining us on another episode of Together We Can. I'm your host, Kevin Bargander, and we'll see you next time.